tonight from Progressive Field in Cleveland, Ohio. It's the completion of a suspended game from August 31st between the Cleveland Indians and the Kansas City Royals. And the two managers, Ned Yost on the left, Terry Francona on the right, have a new cast of characters they can choose from. Hitters and pitchers to get those three outs for Cleveland and to get those two runs for Ned Yost. Hi, everybody. This is Steve Fiziak along with Rex Hudler, and it is a wild scenario we have for you where you started the game in one city and you're going to finish it in the next. Now, this goes back to August 31st. The score was Cleveland 4, the Royals 2. Bottom of the 10th inning, the Reigns washed it away. They said we would con continue the game in Cleveland, Ohio on this date. Anything can still happen. You better believe it. A lot of people out there saying, ah, they can't do that. Just one quick inning. Hey, it's never over. Until it's over in baseball. Looking for a short bus ride around the ballpark, but somebody step up in this brief encounter here. It can happen if you believe. You see the Cleveland and Kansas City pitchers already used in this game and do it for the Royals Mike Mustakas, Eric Kratz, and Alcides Escobar. But will we see Moose hit? When we come back, Joel Goldberg will talk the rules of the completion of this suspended game. suspended game in Cleveland and down here on the field Joel Goldberg and this was really unique we just saw Greg Holland about 10 minutes ago be the first one to walk out by himself to the bullpen because he might if the Royals tie this thing up pitch in the 11th inning rare to see him doing that Mike Moustakis right now is standing in the on deck circle will he hit or won't he hit but the rules are a little bit different when it comes to a suspended game according to rule 4.12 the Royals will have more players available for them than they did back when this game was suspended August 31st. Anyone that is on the roster today that has not already been in that game would be available. Anyone from Lane Adams to Josh Willingham. Eric Hosmer was on the DL at that point. He is available too. And the Indians are taking the field right now. Zach Crockett was originally the pitcher in that game. And earlier today, Terry Francona said he would be the one to start. But he doesn't have to throw a pitch, even though he had been announced in that game. Usually a pitcher does have to throw a pitch or retire the side. But if they choose to go in a different direction, which they have with Atchison, Crockett now, the lefty, would not be available. So it'll be Scott Atchison on the hill. Perhaps then that means we will be seeing Mike Moustakis. Right now, guys, Moustakis and Eric Kratz, the originally scheduled hitters, are in the on-deck circle. The intrigue continues here over these potential three outs and how about this if the Royals can score three in the tenth it'll be a road walk-off win although they're the home team and Greg Holland would get the win without throwing a pitch today.
Thank you very much, Joel. And Scott Atchison has had a solid season for Terry Francona, a 2.57 ERA, and has thrown 70 innings. And Rex, his whole game is about his command and control. Only 14 walks in those 70 innings. Yeah, no, he's really stepped up for Terry Fran Francona this year. He's been a, a, a veteran pitcher who's really done what Francona's asked him to do. Now, he's also been in the closing mix this year, along with Co Cody Allen. He's got a fastball, 87 to 93. He cuts his fastball. He's got a curve and a changeup. Look for something early. That's all I can tell you. Moose is stepping to the plate, pick out a cookie, and make this thing interesting. Nedio said his key was to get that first man on, somehow bring the tying run to the plate. This is a much more offensive minded ballpark than the Kauffman Stadium in Kansas City. 325 down the right field line, 325 down the left field line, but a high wall in left. Rustakis, the batter. You see it? Pretend like you're in the backyard like you were when you were a kid. Game's on the line, you're at the plate. Got a nice breeze blowing to right field from Oos. Atchison pitching very well. Last 10 games since the end of August. An 096 ERA. He's allowed just one earned run in nine and a third innings. And Rostakis in this game, which started August 31st, 0 for 3. And Atchison falls behind with a breaking ball down low and in. Is any way to get on base. 38 year old veteran out of Denton, Texas. Now back even with the count at two balls and two strikes. Jan Gomes, the catcher. We are minus one umpire. Apparently Dana DeMuth became ill before the game, and it was just announced five minutes ago that he would not, and we would be going with a three-man umpiring crew. Mustakas tries to drop one to right yes. and does, and the Royals get their first man on and bring the tying run to the plate. Nice, nice lob shot. <laughs> Bottle that up. You know, Moose is going to come out for Gore to score. And Eric Hosmer will be pinch hitting for Eric Kratz. Changes for Kansas City. So the Royals have a speed guy on, and they have a power guy coming to the plate. Now, Hosmer was not available on that August 31st game because he was still recovering from the hand injury he suffered after being hit by John Lester in July, fracturing a bone in his hand. Haas knows what to do. Atchison's not overpowering. Just look out over. That wasn't a one. This is as close as you can get to growing up on the playground. <laughs> Making up your own scenarios. Show up and play. That's right. Osmer with a vicious rip and misses one ball, one strike. Okay, vicious swings we don't need right now. Vicious swings are, are, take you out of your game and pulls your head off. So try to just stay within yourself. He's got plenty of power with just a short, quick stroke. Gore doesn't have a very big lead over there. Now Hosmer down in the count, one ball, two strikes. Even with two strikes, he will take a mighty rip. A base hit to just about anywhere would get Gore probably to third base. He has that kind of speed and had bluffed a move that last attempt. He goes, the pitch is swung on and missed. There'll be no throw. And Hosmer strikes out. It's the third stolen base for Terrence Gore. Escobar, who's been a hot hitter of late, comes to the plate. He was one for three in that game back on August 31st. And when that game started, the Royals were 74 and 61, tied with Detroit for first place in the American League Central and the tribe was 70 and 64 three and a half games back but had won the first two games of that series. Zepchinski is the left hander warming in the Cleveland bullpen. 
He's likely getting ready for Gordon. How about trading places with Gore? Little double here. Escobar been very aggressive in his last several games. Been making some solid contact. And he has 33 doubles this year. Upstairs, 2 and 0. Now head to head, Alcides just 1 for 5 against the Cleveland right hander. I talked to Dale Swain. Royals hitting instructor about Escobar before the game, and he said his hands are just in a better position. Is why he's been so hot of late. That ball is knocked down the line. The third baseman Chisenhall with a low throw to Escobar is the second out. So the Royals down to their final hope in this suspended game from August 31st. Well, Escobar, he tried that double down the line, just didn't work. Nori Aoki now the batter. Terry Francona trying to climb a little bit closer to the wild card spot in the American League Central. They started the day five games back of Detroit. Detroit is hosting the Chicago White Sox. This evening in just about an hour. Strike one. Strike two. Cleveland won the first two games of that late August series by scores of six to one and three to two in 11 innings. In the first two games of that series, the Royals did not hit well with runners in scoring position, just two for 18, and they don't want to leave Gore stranded at second base in game three. Aoki, two left field, a base hit. Yes. Gore comes rounding third. He will score, and it's a four to three game. So Nori stays hot. They try to fastball up. What are they thinking? He can't throw him anything near the plate. He has got a magic wand. And all of a sudden, it got quiet here. Oh, that fastball, you know, Aoki's saying, really? I can make contact with that. That plays right into my strength. Aoki continues to drive the bus. Even though the bus is only going around the ballpark, they need another big hit here. Find a gap. Dyson will be pinch running. Got to get to second. Ball one. I think Ned Yost thought he might be pitching out, so he had Gerard Dyson hold at first. Brantley very deep in left. Born a two time Gold Glove winner in center. Tyler Holt and right. Matchison hadn't thrown over once. Dyson goes. Pitch taken. Throw by Gold. Gets into center field. And Dyson will put the brakes on. That's the second steal in the inning for the Royals. Now the tying run is in scoring position for Infante. Oh, yes. That's all you got to do in a game like this. And that's one of the reasons why the Royals are dangerous. They've got the burners. Ned Yost has his option. Gore to score, and now Dyson rips off second base. Gets him in scoring position. Lousy single is going to make it close. Dyson continues his career best. That's his 36th steal of the year. Conte has been a good clutch hitter throughout his career. There's a strike. He has two game winning hits this year. No one's holding. Yeah, no one's near Dyson. How about he steals third base and they throw the ball into left field? Nobody near him. You know he wants to go. I should say two late game winners this year. One was a walk off in Kansas City. A swing and a pop up on the infield. is there the game is over Cleveland wins it four to three.
the Royals made it interesting. And Ned Yost with a pat on the back to Nori Aoki, who got the base hit to draw the Royals to within one, but Atchison does nail down the save. We'll come back and talk more about the completion of the suspended game from August 31st after this.